Today the Lord has sent me to release and I'm going to anoint you. After today, say after now. Everything that the devil thought he's doing, you will be exempted from it. It is a supernatural thing and I want us to understand it today. From about yesterday, the Lord is speaking to me, I think about last night, the Lord is speaking to me about exemption. And so sometime during the day, he said, this is the thing that I'm going to do. I am going to follow my word to fulfill it, anoint my people and tell them that when everything seems to have failed, they will be pulled out of the crowd. You will be the only man that will be pulled out of that crowd. First touch someone say, even if there is a, a list of people to go abroad and they said you don't qualify you will be the one that will qualify in the name of jesus supernatural exemption is going to be yours i'm going to show you how there's so many ways according to the lord according to the bible there are so many ways by which exemption happens and we have so many cases so many examples by which it happens we see that the righteous men in scripture are exempted. The Bible speaks in the book of Genesis about Noah and his entire family. Because he was righteous when the flood came and it was meant to destroy everybody. They were exempted supernaturally. They were put in the ark and nothing happened to them that happened to the other people. Can you imagine that for the entire time that the flood happened, they were fed satisfactory they, they, they had enough they had more than enough in the ark they did not lack anything good while they were in the ark they did not lack anything from the outside and God had supernaturally exempted them from the destruction that happened to the rest of the people my prayer for you is that you are going to be supernaturally exempted I guarantee you even death will not find its way to you in the name of Jesus Christ because the flood consumed everybody everything that was living everything everything that existed and there is in the scripture a technology for exemption there is, there is in scripture, I don't have the time to tell you everything, but for that man, Noah, if this be the first thing that you write, he was exempted because he was righteous. He was exempted because he was righteous. Because the Bible speaks of him as a righteous man. The Bible speaks of him as a man that feared the Lord. So there are quite a number of protocols that we consider or will actually put you in exemption today i'm going to activate just one of them but if today i'm going to activate one of them i i guarantee you it is going to work for you i know with all my heart it is going to work for you so if the first one is righteousness we see that a man being righteous before the lord heard the voice of the Lord and said, prepare an ark. I'm going to destroy everyone, but I will not destroy you. So while other people are perishing, you will not perish. While other people are dying, you will not die. I don't care what the situation is. I guarantee you, because you are here on the day that the Lord is decreeing this, you are supernaturally exempted from death. Accidents will not find you in the name of Jesus Christ. You will hear it on the neighborhood. You will hear it on TV. It shall never come near your dwelling in the name of Jesus Christ. That is what it means to be exempted. People go through different things, but then you don't know. You have no idea what it is they are talking about. Because there is a covering on your life. Today, in the name of Jesus Christ, you will be supernaturally covered in the name of Jesus so according to scripture, we see another man in the book of Job. Job chapter 1, verse 1 speaks about who Job was, being the best, blameless, a man that feared God and eschewed evil. In the land, the Bible says in the land of the east, the entire land. And even if, according to scripture, we see that the devil took everything that he had, 
even the devil taking everything that he had was because he was blameless before the law there was a contention between God and the devil the devil goes to the Lord and says does Job fear you for nothing you have given him everything but he also says you have put a hedge around him I cannot touch him I cannot touch his finances so it is a hundred percent exemption if the devil is trying you and he cannot find his way to you he has the lord has built a hedge around you that even if the devil thinks that he's going to penetrate it he tries it and tries it and tries it and he cannot penetrate it even according to scripture he only penetrated it according to the permission of god because god needed to prove that this is a blameless man can I guarantee you somebody look I am going to activate just one thing tonight but if you are righteous the exemption that happened to Noah happens to you if you are blameless the exemption that happened to Job and the devil portion coming back to him as restoration is going to appear to you as well in the name of Jesus Christ touch someone say supernatural exemption that exemption if I may explain it to you, I need you to understand something. There's so many times in scripture when people are exempted from the things that are supposed to come to them. Give me the book of Luke chapter 4. This is my base. It doesn't mean that that's the thing we want to talk about only. But this is the thing that the Lord has put on my heart to activate today. So I've told you about righteousness. I've told you about being blameless. Before I go there, you see the Bible says... Say with me, and Enoch walked with God. Say walked with God. Say walked with God. So men that walk with God, they are exempted from natural death. Woo! I don't know if you're going to be on, taken by chariots of fire, but if you understand me, you are officially exempted from natural death. Some of us will just be no more. I don't know if I have a man. Some of us will just be no more. You are here today. There is no grave. There is nothing. You have already arrived in heaven. The things that happen in this earth are controlled in the spiritual realm. Not everything must happen to you. Ngambina neighbor, even if life has problems, you can be exempted from problems. Do you understand me? Even if this life naturally, because it is an evil world, even if naturally it has luck and it has famine and it has bankruptcy, you will be supernaturally exempted from those results in the name of Jesus Christ. That is what the Lord is trying to speak to us about. Give me that scripture. Luke chapter 4 verse 25. I want to show you something. I can show you a million things, but I want to concentrate on this because someone said by a prophet by a prophet you are delivered and by a prophet you are preserved first follow me L look at me for a little while i want to establish supernatural exemption by the prophetic anointing because i am called as a prophet so there is already a deposit for me to push you into places you can never go on your own tonight in the name of Jesus Christ so I'm not going to say because the rest of the things that happen in that scripture about righteousness about walking with God about knowing God about being anointed by God where men the Bible says about David that he had a heart after God God's own heart right so all those things have everything to do with you they are all individual decisions it is you making a promise or a decision to stand blameless before the Lord. It is you making a decision to be righteous with God. It is you making a decision to walk with God. It is you making a decision for your heart to be pure toward God. This is the only one in that list where another man is allowed to release supernatural exemption to you. So it doesn't really matter what is happening in your life right now. I guarantee you, after the anointing hits you today, you will get out of that crowd and the Lord will set you apart in the name of Jesus Christ. And this is it. 
This is when Jesus, of course, chapter 4 of Luke, starts when he's gone to the wilderness and that, and then he comes back. And then he begins his ministry. This is the 418 where he speaks about, he reads the scroll of Isaiah. And then he says, this day, this thing has been fulfilled in your life. This day, can I echo Jesus? This day, supernatural exemption is going to be fulfilled in your life in the name of Jesus. And he said unto them, you will surely say unto me this proverb, physician, heal thyself. Whatsoever we have heard done in Capernaum, do also here in thy country. He was speaking to the people that he was ministering to. And he said, verily I say unto you, no prophet. Can we read this together? You had better read. One, two, three, go icon. And he said, verily I say unto you, no prophet is accepted in his own country. First pack there a little bit. He's only, Jesus is a cheap prophet and he's actually ministering where it is he was born. And you can imagine there are people around him saying we played football together. How are you saying you came from above? I saw you when you were one year. I went to school with you from when you were young. I need you to focus on me a little bit. There are people that are going to see you after today. And the person they thought that they went to school with is no longer the person that they are looking at. There has been something that has been altered in their countenance. If it is you I'm speaking to, I guarantee you, the word I give you today shall be made flesh in your life. This is exactly what he's talking about. Because these same people, including his own brothers and sisters, that they grew up with him. How in the world are you saying that you came from above? This is the thing. And God, Jesus is only trying to help us understand that they are going to be barriers to us receiving the prophet. I want you to follow. There will be barriers. The person might not be might not look the way you want them to look they might not speak the way you want them to speak as a matter of fact they might have nothing to do with your liking they might be the entire opposite of a person you want but that man has been deep has a deposit that man has been entrusted with the keys that open your next level that man has been entrusted with the answer to your prayer with the key for your healing that is exactly what he's trying to talk about because when he comes in they are saying isn't this the son of joseph aren't you the son of kanakulia so when you come here and you present yourself people keep asking me why are you called prophet john they don't understand that for me even if i was born here i migrated to another place so the things of this world don't really matter in the realm where i i live so when i speak to you i guarantee you i don't speak to you as a natural man i am speaking from another position altogether i am not speaking as a man that was born here i was born from above whether you believe it or not but the lord is saying if you believe it you will see the fruits of what it is you have believed he's trying to help them understand that you are rejecting me and yet i have the answer to what it is you want do not let the outside countenance fool you do not let the outside appearance fool you the dress has no power the voice creates miracles i pray there is a man in this house i pray that the prophetic that the, the prophet you see and you keep wondering why aren't they called prophet prophetess Nambira neighbor what happened to pastores and what happened to apostores do you know it is a mindset he's trying to say that when you encounter me please drop everything that you think you know so that you may partake of the thing that i carry 
that is what he's talking about he is talking about the fact that there will always be a prophet in a generation that is raised for some people that will understand that prophet i have no problem for me i have no quarry with anybody i don't even have time to start saying this pastor that pastor what 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 i know i have a mandate i have an agenda i put everything in the thing that the lord has told me to do i don't have time to be liked i don't have time to be disliked because that has nothing to do with the mandate that has been entrusted with me so i have no problem saying this and the other when prof when jesus touch your neighbor say he's the chief prophet he's a prophet of prophets when he says no prophet is accepted in his own country it is because he is trying to administer healing to those very people that are suffering that are in sickness and disease and they are saying no the the son of joseph will not touch me they are saying ah, ah, this woman will not touch me prophet I know a hundred percent what I'm talking about. I have met people and they have not, they have missed the time of their visitation. When Jesus Christ, you know so many people say, the only time Jesus Christ is when Lazarus was dead. And the Bible says, Jesus wept. There's a sentence there, it just has two words. But Jesus cried two times. At the tomb, because of the unbelief of the people. But he also cried when he looked at the people of Jerusalem and said they have not known the time of their visitation. He said, how can I be here? I have power to heal you and you are still looking for something else. How can I be here and I have the power to resurrect you and you are still looking for another king? They ask, are you the Messiah or should we wait for another one? If you understand that the Lord has brought you here for purpose. Before this ministration ends, I guarantee you, your doors will be open in the name of Jesus Christ. I guarantee you with everything on the inside of me. Help me touch someone near you, say, even if it failed last year and it failed last month, the Lord is only asking you to open your heart today and not reject the prophet that has been sent to you. That if you will allow them access to you i guarantee you you will have your breakthrough in the name of jesus christ next verse let me show you 25 which is the anchor of what i'm talking about listen in other words he say there will be people please focus your eyes on me leave the screen for now put your eyes on me there will be people that will not understand the prophetic gift before them they will come face to face and they will miss their visitation but he says for some that are alert whoa, for some that understand for some that see the thing that is behind the body that is behind the vessel that is speaking behind the person that has been sent to them they will receive a hundred percent the results that they need in the name of jesus christ i pray on that man today I pray you that man look I don't I don't believe in praying over something forever I don't as a matter of fact the highest number of days I can give you is seven and it is for your benefit I'm saying kakationo to msanze Egypt to you know moja Egypt I tell you ready see to mutu say mo promised land seven days are enough for you to get to the promised land seven prophetically and I'm not doing this mathematics with my understanding it's a prophetic mathematics uh, the highest number of days I can give you is seven if you are sure you are connecting to this anointing seven days is too long for you to be without a job I keep saying for me this happens right now now as I speak as I speak the anointing 
to supernaturally exempt you is already flowing where you are. There will be people that are going to turn things upside down because of you. You have not yet understood. Your company will reshuffle so that you can have an opportunity to go to the top. There will be people that will be given as a ransom over your life. Other people will die. You will not die. Other people will, will get sick. You will not get sick. Other people will be taken to prison. You will not be taken to prison. You will be exempted from everything that the devil is planning to put on your life. Touch your neighbor say, if I understand, if I understand the gift that is before me, even tonight, I can get my breakthrough. Tonight. Look, focus on me a little bit. I know that in whichever congregation, there will be people that have tried things and failed. Even here. Even here, you received a prophetic word, but then you have not seen the results of them. But then, think for a minute. What is it about this other man? Who has received a prophetic word and before that very day ends they have the results what is it that has happened it is the same mouth it is the same prophet that means i need to retract my steps and go backwards and say okay for sure there are people i've given a prophetic word and they've wanted to go ahead with their own word and do whatever it is they want to do with the prophetic word they received from my mouth they say that is not how it works. Singo ye yanyo, nature chigambo, one never dewa chi yada. Nambila neighbor, Boboli Mogesinio, nature chigambo, one never dewa che wada. But because it has come from a mouth, allow that mouth to direct you and guide you until you receive the results a hundred percent. Because you see, before the prophetic word comes to you, I guarantee you, I guarantee you. Look, I don't know, you have not had time to know me. And you cannot actually know me. Even if you try, you will not know me. Because you see, some people are so used to false prophets telling them, you do this. And so they have something to get out of them. Your marriage has nothing to do with me. I will not be there in your honeymoon. So when I tell you fast and pray seven days, you had better do what I'm telling you so that you can walk into your honeymoon. I keep asking, let me ask the question again. How many of you are taking me for your honeymoon? Jesus Christ. See? I am not going to go. Okay, you will, you will get for me another room. Will you take me? Do you see? <laughs> no one wants to take me. Ngambira neighbor, in your aircraft, will you take me? You see? It is for your own interest. The Lord has never sent a prophet to receive something for themselves. Because the prophet has received God a hundred percent. There is nothing else that they want. The God is only using them as a conduit to release a blessing over another man. He's like a station, a sufficient station where he says, what do you want? Give it. What do you want? Give it. And that is why in the body of Christ, there is so much contention with the prophetic. Because they say, there is nothing they are going to get from there. They just want miracles. Ngambina neighbor, miracles are our food. Muti demu, Mugambe miracles are my food. Mugambe, when you have breakfast, miracle in the name of Jesus Christ. When you have lunch, miracle. When you have a snack, miracle. When you have dinner, miracle. In the name of Jesus, may this umbrella reach you by the power of the Holy Spirit. Listen, this is how you are exempted. The reason I stand here every day and I say, say you are blessed beyond measure is because the Lord found you faithful enough to bring you before a prophet. He loved you so much to bring you before a prophet. Your eyes had better open over that matter. Seriously. Because there are people who will go here and there and here and there and they waste 20 years of their life and not receive anything. When the Lord directs your footsteps to a prophet, touch your neighbor say, you are blessed. 
you are blessed even if you've not received everything you are already blessed at the least that anointing as according to scripture will deliver you and the anointing will preserve you until you enter your marriage do you see he will preserve you and keep you covered until the doors of your destiny open until you become ceo he will preserve you that is why he says by your prophet you are delivered by your prophet you are preserved because there are things that are calling to your destiny in between we will make sure the devil does not take your life we will make sure the devil does not take away anything from you we will make sure that you are overshadowed until the day that you rise up as the dawn in the name of jesus christ listen this is the supernatural exemption i'm talking about if you get it i guarantee you because of the prophet so help me god i have nothing to brag about i am worse than you actually but the lord has found me faithful to just entrust me with something for other people just that it is not for bragging but I know that if I go ahead of you, oh my God, I hope I'm not even speaking a language you don't understand. Because people know how to recite. The Lord will go ahead of you. The Lord will go ahead of you by the prophetic. If I go ahead of you, ngambina neiba visa nebweba ya gane mirundi chikumi. Kuluno nengu gamba genda kuembasi. My goodness. I don't care. I, th that person who is there, at least they will doze. By the time they wake up, they will have put approved. That is the power I'm talking about. We will blind their eyes. They will be like, are you Nakamia? No, I'm not Nakamia. Okay, Nakamia approved. They will not see anything. They will not be able to read anything. There is a power that is in the prophetic that must take you to the place of your destiny. Jesus is speaking to those people and he says, but I tell you of a truth. No contention. Listen, he says many widows. Put your eyes on the screen. Let's read together. But I tell you of a truth. Many widows were in Israel in the days of Elijah. Let me organize it for you. One, two, three, go. Can we read? But I tell you of a truth many poor people were in chireka in the days of prophet don You've understood this thing today whatever chain has held you shall leave you in the name of jesus i want to i want to i want to explain scripture the way you can actually get it the bible says there were many widows i don't want you to forget that in that time it was famine it was famine the famine was everywhere that means that every other person was faced by famine not just widows there were men there were women there were widows there were young men there were young women there were all sorts of people there were kings there were priests all of them were in the famine and the bible says there were many widows in israel in the days of Elijah when the heaven was shut up three years and six months and the Bible says when great famine was throughout all the land someone say when poverty is all over Kampala oh Jesus Christ next verse Ooh, but unto none of them was Elijah sent safe and true Zarephath, a city of Sidon, and to a woman that was a widow. There were many people. There are many people where you come from, but it is you that God has sent. There are so many other people you know. They are not here. There are people in your family. They are not here. God is only trying to say, I want to secure your future. So I have directed you to a place where I can stamp and I can change and alter your future so that you don't end up like the people of your village. So that you don't end up like the people of your family. You have not yet understood. If you have understood it, it is yours in the name of Jesus. Elijah 
was sent. Can you imagine? Oh, Jesus Christ. When a prophet is sent to you. Nambila neighbor, my prophet. Bwabato yagala vyo gera, to vyo gera no. It is not a must. Nambila neighbor, my prophet. The day you realize that the prophet before you is sent for you, you will get everything that you are supposed to get. The prophet is never sent to a region. Ah, uh -uh, you don't understand. Elijah was in the same place. The Bible says that when the famine was sent, the Bible says he sent him to the brook Cherith. He said, stay there and I will command ravens to feed you and you will get water from the brook. And when it's time, it's window passed. He said, get up. I send you to Zarephath in Sidon. He said, I have commanded a widow woman to feed you. The widow did not receive the message, but Elijah received the message. What? I pray in the name of Jesus that you're the man God is exempting today. You are the man God is setting aside that even if everyone is going through the famine, you will not go through it in the name of Jesus. Supernatural exemption at this level is coming through the prophetic. They would have done anything. They would have done anything. You can imagine that a prophet with everything they carry was sent to one man. I pray you're that man, Jesus Christ. I pray you're that man that everything else that I carry in sufficiency, you can receive the totality of it in the name of Jesus Christ. Today will be the day. When my hand touches you, I guarantee you, you will receive a deposit. Things will start to work according to the speed of the Lord. There will be no delay or stagnation. People will start looking at you and say, how did you do this? How did you do this? Someone say, by a prophet. I was delivered. By a prophet, I am preserved. By a prophet, I am prospered. That is the anointing. And let me show you something. When Jesus mentioned this, he's trying to let those people know that if they receive him, the way the widow received Elijah, they will have no problem anymore because he was the sufficiency, the fulfillment of everything that Elijah was. We keep referring to Elijah as a man of the sufficiency of God because whether you wanted fire, <laughs> it is there in built in the man do you understand the sufficiency i'm talking about and then here he's trying to tell them that if you receive me the way that widow received there are other people that will not receive you ngambina neighbor you're not called for everybody you are called to a specific people. The ones that see what you see. The ones that see beyond the dress. The ones that see beyond the woman. The ones that see beyond the face. And they say, oh, there is something I've seen in there. I need to take it. Those are the ones that receive it. Because when Elijah went to the widow, he did not go with food. He did not go with anything. He was just a normal man. And he tells the lady, without even telling the, 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 the lady that I am Elijah, I'm a prophet. She saw beyond Elijah, beyond the man, and said, this is my last meal. But let me give it to the man and immediately the word of the lord came to elijah and he said for thus says the lord your basket shall not waste dry the entire famine exemption so while other people were gnashing with the famine my god there was a widow who was eating large every day breakfast large supper. when you receive a prophet as a prophet that means there will be occasions when you receive a prophet as a woman. There will be times when people receive the prophet as a lady. They will see, there will be times when they receive a prophet as madame. They will receive a prophet as 
pastor ngambira neighbor when your eyes open and you see a prophet as a prophet a hundred percent sufficiency that they carry is deposited on the inside of you in the name of jesus that is what he's trying to say but the exception was that there was an entire famine ngambira neighbor economy tenagana mukwate ko bulunch mugambe economy tenabagana the prophet is in charge of another economy i pray you understand me ngambira neighbor sente tesinabula kubanga wano miracle money ajabuli runako how is it possible that people can say i'm looking for money i can't find it and there are people every day making a line to say i received miracle money i received miracle money there is another economy that you need to attach yourself to that is not the economy of uganda it is not the economy of kampala it is a an economy that is entrusted in the lions of a prophet The Lord never sends any prophet authentically without giving them the sufficiency that they need to support his people. Can never happen. Touch your neighbor say and there were many lepers. Verse 27. And there were many lepers. Ngambira neighbor, there were many sick people. These days we don't have leprous people. What is the common disease? I don't know. Also because I don't live in that realm. Ngambira neighbor, there was a lot of flu. Is it flu? Cold? Fever? Whatever it is you want. Even if it is cancer. And the Bible says, and many lepers were in Israel in the time of Elisha, the prophet. There were many people that were, that were dying. Listen to me. There were many people that were dying because of cancer. There were many people that were dying because of malaria because of hiv and then what happened the bible says and none of them was cleansed saving naman the syrian you are the man are you naman i don't know do you understand what i'm saying that out of everybody hiv can kill everybody cancer can kill everybody even if it killed everyone in your family it will not kill you exemption exemption by the prophetic even if it has been known as a curse over your family so and so does not get married our people do not get married it has been written the people in our family they don't get married they get married they, they, they run away with a gentleman then they bring back children then they remain alone then they become old then nothing happens ngambira neighbor you are at the source of your answer i guarantee you let me tell you something there is nothing impossible in the prophetic nothing because at the worst according to the biblical standards the prophetic is allowed to create the prophet has been given a mandate to create things that don't exist because ideally when the lord sends a prophet he has sent them as himself that is why the only two scriptures in the bible where he says he says about offering he says do not come before me empty-handed that is referring to himself and then he says you don't go before a prophet empty-handed because ideally there is no real difference between this seat and that seat so if you come to encounter a prophet just know before you even make that encounter that you are not encountering a man you have come face to face with god and i guarantee you you will have the answer that you are looking for in the name of jesus christ today you will be supernaturally exempted from everything that other people go through when other people fail to marry you will not fail to marry if other people are in luck you will not be in luck if other people are in poverty you will never see 
poverty any day in your life. It might be difficult for others, but this anointing exempts you from the reality and the possibilities of other people happening in your life. I guarantee you in the name of Jesus Christ, tonight, when the anointing comes upon you, even if it looks like there is a curse, whisper to someone, even if it looks like there is a curse, there is a witch doctor. Gamba, witch doctor. Give him to me. Gamba, wobo muina mumpe. Munonya. Mwagala. Eh? We will put here outside, not inside. We put here outside. We say, you bring fire. If you fail, I bring fire. Monday did Takusobola. Because there is a prophet that has been sent to you. To you. Today you will be supernaturally exempted from debt. Debt is not your life. Debt is not part of you. Someone say you will be supernaturally exempted from barrenness of any nature. You will be fruitful in, the, in your womb. You will be fruitful in your business. You will be fruitful in your marriage. You will be fruitful in your career and everything else that you touch in the name of Jesus Christ. Touch, touch your neighbor. Say today, when the anointing touches you, the thing that is the most impossible of all your things will be the first to be dealt with in the name of Jesus Christ. Supernatural exemption. Do you know, according to the book of Exodus chapter 10, the Bible says, when the plagues were being put in Egypt, that they cast darkness. Darkness. The people live in the same place. But the Egyptians were seeing darkness. And those of God, they had light everywhere. You don't yet understand. The light is going to take you into the treasures that are stored for you. In the name of Jesus Christ, may your eyes be open. May you receive the light of the Lord. That you may be able to see when other people don't see. So that you may be able to pick out the treasure and be the billionaire that you were supposed to be. In the name of Jesus Christ. Oh. <laughs>